Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Disciples of Zinch. In the mortal realms, there exist whole nations devoted to Zinch, the changer of the ways. These places are lands of torment, each a kaleidoscopic clash of madness made real. Hope turned to screaming terror, and phantom beasts given horrible life. To walk there is to mutate, to become something foul. To feel one's mind unraveling, and one's soul curdle. The ambitions of Zinch's worshippers go further than the conquest of the realm's entire. They seek nothing less than to change reality and turn that which was once solid and reliable into a quicksand of sanity-sapping hideousness. Ultimately, they would see Zinch's own crystalline domain, a realm that once existed only in nightmares, consume the lands of man, elf, and warden. They reason that it is better to serve the victor in the war for supremacy than to die alongside his outwitted enemies, and in the business of manipulation and intrigue there is none more powerful than Zinch. The disciples of Zinch have achieved much in the shadows of civilization. They thrive on duplicity and illusion, on misdirection and artifice. Even the most prized cities of Sigmar's new order are built on corrupted foundations shot through with secret societies and murderous cults that chant their demon-summoning rites in basements and hidden temples. Yet when the call to arms comes, when the insurrection sends the Arcanites boiling from their hiding places, and the demonic scintillating hosts are unleashed into reality, the full splendor of Zinch's devoted sets the very air aflame. To fight against them is to fight against raw magic, insidious cunning, and the worst kind of change. And as any disciple of Zinch will whisper to you in the darkness, change is inevitable. Why not embrace it? The Eldritch Threat While the crude warlords of the mortal races measure their success by territory conquered, the disciples of Zinch seek nothing less than to capsize reality itself. They are masters of the sorcerer's right and the devious plot. When at war, a barrage of magic reveals the awful truth, that their enemies were doomed before the first shot was fired. The skies burn livid pink and cerulean blue. Trees writhe and become tentacled horrors. The land cracks to form needle-fanged mouths that scream in protest, 
for such intense concentrations of magic are unnatural even in the enchanted reaches of the mortal realms. The disciples of Zinch have shucked off their illusions and gone to war and mass, and with them comes the terrible truth. The realms belong more to the scions of the Chaos Gods than they do to those races that defy them. The disciples of Zinch are neither simple warriors nor brawlers, nor are they mercenaries or soldiers of fortune. They train but rarely with the sword and bow, and they spurn the cannon and the gun. Nor do they study the treaties of war masters and conquerors from ages past. To them, such conventional conceits, such as everyday tools of battle, are as crass and simplistic as the daubings of a child upon a father's masterpiece. To these devotees of change, the notion of war is mutable in the extreme, as is the flesh and mindscape of the foe. They fight their battles on several planes at once, the mental, the spiritual, and the physical all mingling together into one mind-boggling and spectacular whole. Zinch's devoted are steeped in matters arcane. Through long study and diabolical pact, their understanding of the nature of things is so advanced that they can shape reality. With an arrhythmical chant or a carefully inscribed phrase given voice, they conjure bolts of weird fire that can strip a man's flesh from his bones or melt stone to the consistency of butter. Some can peer into the future or squint into the murky mists of the past, plucking secrets from the pliant branches of fate that they have bent to their will. To fight them is maddening, for to land a solid strike against such an enemy is nigh impossible. The Many Fates of Zinch the mortal realms were once beyond the reach of the demons of the dark gods. The natural barriers between the worlds of men and the realm of chaos held them at bay, just as a mile-thick glacier of hard ice keeps a prospector from the mineral wealth of the mountain beyond. The far-seeing demons of Zinch could only look on in avaricious frustration as they peered at the mortal realms through the fractal reflections of the crystal labyrinth. Here were eight complex new realities for them to uncover, corrupt and twist into unrecognizable shapes before claiming them in the name of the changer of ways. But the mortal realms were denied to them by the unyielding Lord Sigmar, and they could no more claim them than a swarm of insects could claim the depths of the sea. Instead, for long ages they fought their battles in the realm of chaos, the dark gods matching their might against one another as they worked secret schemes in the background that might one day see their influence expand into pastures new. However, the demons of Zinch were resourceful in their cunning, and they never truly gave up on their quest to bend new realities to their master's whims. 
whenever a mortal mind reached out across the veils of reality through sorcery or shamanistic rite, they would cluster around, eyes wide with glee, and whisper their corrupting truths. Whenever a convoluted ploy saw a schemer lay a rival low, they would gather in the shadows, murmuring of rewards undulled, should the victor follow the darkness in their soul. To its logical conclusion, I hope you couldn't hear the demonic roar of gasoline engines outside just now. Try to wait until they go away. They seem intent on changing my plans for this video. Okay, they seem to have gone. It began as a hushed prayer here, an arcane diagram there, but soon, and with gathering speed, the imprecations for Zinch's favor became more and more common. <laughs> that car is still outside, still making a lot of noise. I kind of like leaving stuff like this in because at least when I listen back to it, it doesn't sound too disturbing. Um, and I like to publicly shame people ruining my videos, ripping through parking lots at 10.30 at night. We will forge on. The Hanging Valleys saw Anvrock's foremost meteoromancers, who formerly prayed for the gift of fresh water for the, from the skies, making sacrifices to the eternity they knew as the god Mercurial and, in doing so, unwittingly gave tribute to Zinch. In the courts of Prosperis, those who were bored with their wealthy and privileged lives took up the dark arts in the hope of finding new areas of reality to conquer, for proving their supremacy had become a way of life. They, too, were rewarded, but they found far more than they bargained for, and fell to madness. In Hish's most remote regions, the scholars that had dared venture into Heaxia begged the skies for the intellect and mental strength necessary to profit from the myriad complex truths that were pouring into their minds. Zinch was only too happy to oblige, at a cost, of course, as along with that influx of raw information came a nagging desire to learn the darkest secrets of all. A whisper, a staring eye, a claw scraping at the mind. Many were the ways that Zinch worked at the cracks in reality left by the greed and ambition of mortal men, or, in some places, by the honest need for a simple change of fortune. For the realms are cruel, and there are always those who would seek a better life. 
On such dreams are the acts of Zinch found. The demon hosts first entered the lands of mortals through sites of summonation, having been called from beyond by those who would bind them. Such hermetic conjurations carry a huge degree of risk, however. The demons of Zinch are experts in the arcane arts. Magic runs in their blood, or rather, forms their very substance. They will spot a minute imperfection in a spell, or a mangled syllable in the dark tongue of a chaos ritual, as eagerly as a miser spots a gold coin in a shallow puddle. Should a would-be demonologist make such a critical error in his summonations, he may soon find the creature he sought to bind emerging from its ritual circle with a leer of dark glee. The lucky ones are slain soon afterwards, burned to death by warp fire, or ripped to pieces by sharp claws. Those less fortunate find themselves the servants rather than the masters, their souls bound forever to the whims of the same arcane forces they hoped to use to their own advantage. Some of those who sought glory and power from the architect of fate are irrevocably changed, bearing iridescent scales, feathered crests, or clawed appendages in place of limbs. For the most part, those souls that Zinch has claimed for his own bear no mark at all, or else they use glamours and spells to keep the vile aberrations of their form hidden from all save their fellow spellcasters. They labor in secret within the scripter houses, colleges, and tutelage centers of the free cities, making the most of their demonic patronage to ascend through society. They then teach new generations the arts of magic, as if there were nothing untoward about their preeminence. But with ever darker inflections laced through every spell and secret they impart. Those inches' claws sunk deep indeed during the Age of Chaos, especially in the ever-shifting realm of metal. His ultimate triumph over Kamon has been denied to him by the coming of Sigmar's Tempest. Already, however, the scions of the Changer of the Ways are on the rise once more. The reshaping of the realm of death at Nagash's hand has caused the entirety of Sheish to magically invert, a phenomenon that pleases Zinch mightily. But more than that, it has spurred a backlash of wild magical energy to roil across the cosmos. To say that the changer of the ways had a hand in the opening, excuse me, in the coming of the Arcanum Optimar, would be an understatement, and he has profited greatly from the intensification of magic that has been unleashed across the lands, seas, and skies of the eight realms. Never before have the disciples of Zinch been so well poised for success, as even in his victories, Sigmar has played into his enemy's hands. The spires of progress and civilization cast long shadows of their own, and in those shadows, anarchy and misrule will 
thrive. That's them all right, said the Vindicarum outrider, waving his pistol at the column of tattered refugees in the valley. Cultists came straight to you, sir, when we found out about them. Lord Castellant Bronto Steelbreaker squinted through the twilight at the traipsing figures. Are you sure? They don't look much more than beggars. Tendron and I watched them leave, sir. Saw the tattoos on their ankles. The fish and the serpent entwined, sir, and a nasty glow in the eye. Brontos turned to his judicator prime. Well, Veloros nodded by way of confirmation, unslinging his skybolt bow and knocking a crackling arrow. He's right, Brontos, demon dutched one and all. Then we engage, and the reinforcements from Anvil Guard can mop up whatever's left, said the Lord Castellant, unsheathing his great blade. Hear me. Celestial Vindicators engage. Charge these traitors. Brontos's entire brotherhood of Stormcast Eternals surged forward. Voices raised in the song of war as they pounded down the hill towards the refugees below. Bolts of lightning hurtling out from the Judicators on the shoulders of the slopes only to dissipate meters before impact. The tattered Malian refugees gave a great shout, shimmering before Brontos's eyes to become tall, athletically built paragons of humanity with grotesque golden masks. Those at the fore sent volleys of strange fire, pink and blue, streaking back towards the celestial vindicators. Where they struck, armor ran as molten quicksilver. Some stormcasts discorporated in blurs of energy as they returned to the heavens. At the far side of the column, Tanglehorn beastmen made a series of arcane gestures, drawing strange, burning runes in the air. And from nothing at all came a spilling, fizzling tide of demons. Brontos growled, redoubling his pace as fire flew from the creature's fingers. The first few ranks of Brontos's liberator phalanxes were consumed by the multicolored flame, emerging not as burning men, but clouds of scintillating crystal butterflies. Then their comrades crashed in, twinning swords hacking, and the true slaughter began. Though the Stormgast's Sigmarite armor was proof against the blades of the cultists and Sangor beastmen, the Vindicarum free guilders did not fare so well. Even as Brontos whipped his glaive right, left and right, letting the righteous wrath consume him, he saw that the Chaos Worshippers were concentrating their attacks on his mortal allies rather than the Stormcasts. Then, all at once, the host of cultists lay act apart at his feet. They shimmered as if underwater and became defenseless refugees once more. Brontos looked about himself in confusion only to see the Anvil Guard reinforcements cresting the valley. The newcomers looked upon the carnage aghast. Many cried out. With a cold shiver, Bronto stumbled back from the ankle-deep gore around him, realizing what the Anvil Guard reinforcements must have concluded. They had won a battle this day, but they had lost the wider war. The sound of demonic laughter drifted on the wind, but only Brontos, in his wretchedness, could hear it. Z.
Sage Almighty. The Chaos God Sage is known by many titles, including the Changer of the Ways, the Great Conspirator, and the Architect of Fate. Zinj's domains are magic, manipulation, and guile. He is the god of sorcery, as well as deceit. Elaborate skills are his delight, whether they come to fruition or not. Zinj is one of the greater chaos powers, a brother god to Korn, Nurgle, and Sladesh and often a secret ally to the Pantheon's newcomer, the Great Horned Rat. Even amongst gods, Zinj is the undisputed master of the arcane arts, for magic is the most potent of all agents of change. This does not mean Zinj is above sullying his hands with war, rather that he prefers to win battles through guile and sorcery over brute force. The changer of the ways favors the cunning over the strong, the manipulative over the violent, a rune-etched stiletto to the heart, perhaps delivered during a sacrificial ritual or by a pseudopod hidden under priestly robes, pleases him far more than the gory battlefield decapitations, so beloved of corn. Ultimately, though, the act of change is the key element in all that Zinch values, and the change between life and death is the most profound of all. The esoteric kill gives him power, an aspect of reality that most of his followers do not fully realize, but propagate nonetheless. In his true shape, Zinch is the most outlandish of the dark gods. His skin crawls with constantly changing faces that leer and mock any who dare to gaze upon him. As Zinch speaks, these faces appear and disappear, some repeating his words with subtle differences, or providing mocking commentary to cast doubt upon the original remark. Ever shifting, nothing of Zinch feels definitive. Even his purpose is unimaginably complex his schemes beyond the ken of mortals. He was instrumental in the toppling of the world that was into utter destruction, and has doomed hundreds of worlds besides, even collapsing realities altogether in those dimensions that once danced to his tune. Now he focuses his myriad eyes on the mortal realms, eight more realities for him to toy with. Already one is in his grip. Zinch's growing ascendancy following Sigmar's return to the mortal realms and the battles of the Realm Gate Wars hints at plans long nursed to fruition. Embedded deep within Sigmar's grand cities, mortal cultists work in secret to advance his unknowable goals, while Zangor tribes raid the ancient places of the realms in search of lost treasures and abstruse knowledge. Abstruse knowledge. I've never heard that word before. Should the need arise, Zinch sends his demonic hosts forth in all their scintillating glory to sear the land with the chorus coruscating flames of change. And that is actually where we are going to bring this video to a close. I need to leave some time for myself to record this week's Friday video. 
which will be Lovecraft. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking it, maybe sharing it, leaving a comment, and if you aren't already, subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.